Here we are at Rowan Gillespie's workshop and we're just going to go through the process of how the sculptures will be made. Well, this is the room where the kind of concepts happen. I call it the wax room because all the thinking I do tends to be in wax by making little sculptures, thinking things out on a small scale. I tend to use this room to surround myself by pictures of whatever subject matter I'm dealing with. In this case, Sir William Orpen, a famous uh, British war artist, and getting together the ideas of, in this case, making up small images from his paintings, turning his paintings into three-dimensional images, with the idea that I'll have a, a column with a revolving head on the top and inside the column, I don't want his head to fall off now, I'll take it off completely, inside the column I will have different three-dimensional interpretations of his paintings. So from the idea room we move into where the big sculptures are actually made. All the, all the major work is done in here, quite simply because there's the lifting equipment in the room here, beams running across, which mean that I can lift anything from any place in this area and put it down, however heavy it becomes. And as something like the Sir William Orpen sculpture come together, with the inserts, you quickly come up to a massive amount of weight. I think we're talking on this sculpture probably a ton and a half, uh, because the metal becomes so heavy on the way. Behind we have a bishop, uh, the Archbishop Hughes for New York, so unusually, there are two pieces simultaneously in the room here, ready for, for finishing off and crating. The bronze gets melted in this very simple, I'd say 45 year old furnace, uh, which melts the bronze, but actually it's just like a fireplace. All you need is the heat going into that. This is the crucible, uh, looks tiny, but that will actually pour uh, a vast amount of, of bronze. It will pour the full head of William Orpen up there with the shoulders because you're only pouring a shell. You don't actually do them solid. So this is the simple uh, room where I will very shortly be making many figures for Tasmania, and I'm so excited about that. That's the real thing I'm looking forward to. These sculptures are now part of the past, and I'm looking forward to the next project. Um, the process outside, is there a further... Um, outside, it's hard to see at the moment, but when, when the... Um, when the metal is poured into the plaster moulds, the best way to remove the mould from the bronze without doing any damage to it is to put the mould into water so the plaster starts to dissolve and fall off into the bottom of this tank and then use a pressure washer to, press, to get the rest of the plaster off which you can see is splattered all over the building behind and all over the ground around but for some reason the apple tree loves it. <laughs> now, we all would like to think of organic apples and organic everything, but for some reason the apples grow better around my workshop than anywhere else. And here's your vehicle you use to... Um... The transport of, of sculptures. When it comes to getting the sculptures for Tasmania ready, this will well, in this case, only take the, the sculptures as far as Dublin Port. Uh, unless on some of the sculptures I, I will tow as far as uh, Rotterdam, where you get better shipping to the States, and uh, so I don't know what we'll be doing with Tasmania. Your whole yard looks to be littered with uh, maquettes and other pieces. There's, yeah? there's 
a lot more around the back as well, but I try to keep down the amount of metal I have outside because of uh, gypsies coming through and stealing my metal regularly. But you're, you're, you're kind of walking on bronze. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. As sculpture there was, uh, of the guy with the glasses, was made the year that John Lennon was shot. Which one's that? This one. It was called ah, yeah, yeah. Portrait of a Dreamer. And he's got the bullet holes in him. Ah, oh, right. And this, uh, is this a maquette, is it, this one? No, I never made a big one. Nobody wanted it at the time, but I always... Uh, it influenced another sculpture later, where I used the bullet holes in another sculpture. But I kind of love the colour that's come on to it. And this one is uh, in your video as well. This is um... this is the head of W.B. Yeats. And the reason why it's there is that on the finished sculpture in Sligo, people keep stealing his glasses. And so I cast another one just so that I could make up new glasses to fit. Yeah, right. And you can see that hole in the nose. I have that there, have the same hole on the big sculpture in Sligo, and once a year or so I go up with a new pair of glasses and pin them onto his <laughs> nose, and a little bit later somebody steals them again, but uh, you have to keep going. So, took me to a couple of now. Oh well, thanks for the uh, tour run, and uh, <laughs> we look forward to seeing some uh, future work. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah.